Welcome back to another episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen. I'm so excited to have you in my home in Montana in the beautiful Bitterroot Valley. I get to showcase some more of this beautiful country that we have here. And today what we're going to do, Wellington. And I'm gonna be using Broken Arrow Ranch. Our friends down there in, in Texas at Broken Arrow Ranch, they've got this beautiful South Texas antelope. And I'm gonna be rolling that with some pate that I made and that's game pate and then some mushroom duxelle and rolling that in a little puff pastry and serving that with some roasted Brussels sprouts. So stick around and I'll be bringing the forest to your table. I've got this South Texas antelope from Broken Arrow Ranch. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a good sear on that. So the, one of the secrets with Wellington is you don't wanna get the puff pastry all soggy. And part of the secret is, is you wanna season your meat on all sides. And then we're gonna put a, a high temp oil in the pan and we're gonna sear it on all sides. And then with game meat, as you remember from some of my other episodes, I talk about you don't want to overcook it. So this is one of those things that you really have to be a little bit more particular on. And how we're going to help that is we're going to actually remove that from the heat after we sear it and let it cool down. And as after it's cooled down, then we'll build it with our puff pastry and, and pop it into the oven. So that's coming up to heat. What I've done here is I've used my Montana Flavor to Savor steak seasoning and seasoned all sides of that pretty liberally because it's a pretty good size leg filet that we have here of the antelope. So the, it could take a lot of seasoning and plus you, you're kind of developing those layers of flavor. So now that that uh, has come up to temp, we're gonna do a little grapeseed oil, high heat oil there and coat that. And you always know when you're ready, when it starts to kind of smoke and, and you can see that happening. So give that a second. And if you don't know, Yep, you can always put your meat in there and test it. So we heard that sizzle, we know we're good. So you can see how I'm doing the sides first. I'm gonna hold it in place. We're really gonna sear in those juices. Then manage your heat. You don't wanna burn it, but we wanna get a nice good sear. And sometimes you just gotta use your tongs and really hold it, especially when you're trying to get those sides and edges. So I always do the sides and edges first and uh, just kind of give them a good good sear. Like I said, this is not about cooking the meat, this is about searing in the juices. Because we'll actually cook it in the oven inside that puff pastry. So we know we got a good connection when you hear that sound. So I'm just gonna get all sides seared and then we'll put it aside to cool and then I'll start working on my mushroom duxelle. So I've seared off all of that South Texas antelope from Broken Arrow Ranch. I've got that aside resting. Now I've got my pan heated up. We're gonna get working on that mushroom duck cell. So I just got a little bit of butter here and I'm gonna get that melted in the pan. One of the things with the duck cell is that you really wanna make sure you are getting all of the moisture out of the mushrooms. Because again, like I said, we don't wanna have the puff pastry become soggy. So this is gonna take a little time for it to actually get all of the moisture out of the mushrooms. But we're also adding flavor with that butter as well. So as that water is coming out of the mushrooms, it's popping a little bit. So we're going to add just a pinch of oil. I don't wanna burn the mushrooms. And this is just a, a light olive oil that you can saute with but I need to get the dried out. So we're just gonna kind of add, you have to babysit this a little bit. So what I did, I don't know if you can see that, so I, I actually uh, chopped these up and put them in the food processor to get them really nice and fine, minced and, and so forth, because we're gonna actually make like a paste out of this. So it just, we're adding flavor and so forth. 
Right now, I'm gonna add some shallots in here and get those kind of sauteed off. And again, aromatics, adding flavor and aromatic. But also, we need to make sure everything's drying out. And just because I do, again, we wanna season each layer. A Little bit of salt. We're gonna babysit that and really manage your heat. And eventually that will all get kind of dried out. You kind of see the moisture seep out of those mushrooms. And when that's done and they're browned and, and really nice, then we will deglaze with some cream sherry. Sherry and mushrooms is just a beautiful marriage. So I like to use the cream sherry. We used to do this at the restaurant all of the time. We would have, we had an appetizer of it was sauteed mushrooms and the little pop that made you go, oh wow, was actually, we deglazed with the cream sherry. So a lot of times you'll see red wine. If I'm doing mushrooms or something that I want a little bit more decadence, I'll go for the cream sherry. So we'll continue to let this kind of cook and, and saute out and, and get some of that water released. And when we come back, we'll put it all together with the puff pastry and the pate. And I'll show you how that works when we come back. Let's put this uh, Wellington together. So I've got a puff pastry here. I just spread a little bit of flour and then I rolled it out to a little bit thinner. That's gonna also help us get the pastry cooked throughout. I'm not gonna use this whole piece, but you always start with more than what you need so you can cut off the extra. So what I'm gonna do here is take some of this pate and this is pate that I made from Broken Arrow Ranch, uh, South Texas antelope which is actually Nilgai, and I made that from the liver. Beautiful, wonderful flavors. And so typically what you do when you're working with kind of a fat barrier is what it's called. Again, trying to help alleviate some of that moisture because we want to get this puff pastry nice and crispy. So we're going to actually schmear <laughs> some of our pate down. And this is going to act a little bit, not only is it adding flavor and a fat level to a very lean, lean cut of meat, but it also is going to help with some of that moisture and create that fat barrier. So we do that and then we get, we want to look at the whole size of our meat here that we need to put on here. So I'm just going to go maybe a little bit extra because it'll come up the sides and an offset spatula works great in this. And we're not doing a whole lot of um, pate here, we're just doing enough to where it's a kind of a thin layer. So you can see as I'm kind of spreading that out there. And now what I'm going to do is take my seared and rested. So it's actually come back to like a room temperature, but it totally seared and so forth. So I'm actually going to do again, a little schmear on the top here. And that will help me have our mushroom duxel be able to adhere as well. So you can see how the change of the colors happened. This, I've, I've got to taste everything. So I have tasted it. That cream sherry just makes it so delicious. So what I'm going to do is just kind of add a little dollop of that on here and work that down into that uh, pate, but you can see how it kind of wants to bounce off of there. So that's where that pate kind of helps to hold it in place. And the mushroom duxelle is just kind of a, uh, again, a flavor enhancer. So now that we've got all of that, what I want to do is we're gonna now wrap kind of a package here. So I'm going to grab some of the ends, and as you're doing that, you can just kind of take it and, and pull it and tuck it over. And what we're gonna do here is also, we'll cut off some of this extra but I'm also kind of thinning out as I'm pulling and tucking. I'm thinning this out. So you can see that, how long that is and how I can just kind of take my bench scraper and trim some of that extra off. And again, in the front here, we're gonna trim some of that off and this extra. Because a lot of times if you don't leave it in the oven long enough or because it's a Wellington, 
the pastry will get doughy. So you don't want to have too much there, but you want to have just enough. <laughs> Isn't that just what all chefs say? You don't want too much, you want just enough. But so what I'm gonna do here is actually assist me in creating a little bit more wetness to seal this, is I'm gonna use just a little bit of my egg wash, uh, but you can use just straight water too if you want. Um, but I like to add just again that little richness and so forth. So I'm gonna add this here to kind of dampen that and it will help me get a nice seal with that pastry. So you can see as I kind of pulled it and, and made it a little bit thinner, we created more of a seal that's sticking there. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides and then we're gonna do the whole top. So after I get these here and so forth, I'm gonna flip it over onto a baking pan and I'm gonna do a egg wash on the top of all of it. So see how that works. Let me get my, I've got a, I like to do like a parchment lined baking pan because it just helps technically clean up. It's so much easier. If you do get a little seepage or whatnot, it's so much nicer. And especially with an egg wash, that can really crust on your pan. So a parchment paper just helps so much. So this is just an egg wash. I took a, a farm fresh egg and, and added just a little bit of water and then whip that up with a fork. And I'm just gonna dobble this all over. And then my little thing is get down on the edges too. Don't forget that. Because this is your presentation side. So let me turn that over because I can't see that side. Yes, I need a little bit more. Perfect. Now we're gonna put that into a pretty hot oven. Again, we don't want to overcook our game, so you're gonna cook this a little bit higher temp for less time. So let's pop this in the oven, and then we'll come back and get our Brussels sprouts. Keep wanting to call them asparagus, but they're Brussels sprouts. Get them tossed with a little olive oil and herb seasoning. So let's go to the oven with this. I've taken my Brussels sprouts and just tipped them off the, the little root end and halved them. And now I'm just gonna toss them with a little olive oil, just enough to kind of coat that, but you're also to help the seasoning to adhere to it. And I'm gonna use some of my Montana Flavor to Savor herb seasoning because this has already got salt and, and pepper and garlic and onion and all these different herbs. And so it just makes a beautiful, delicious toss and you don't have to add anything else. You can just olive oil and the herb seasoning and then toss everything. And when we put it on the pan, again, you can see I've got my parchment lined sheet pan. I'm going to put them cut side down and then these will go into a hot oven. So when we bring our Wellington out of the oven, these can go in and let the Wellington rest because the Wellington has to rest for about 10, 15 minutes before we ever cut into it. So we gotta have those juices kinda come back in. So now I'm just gonna take these and put them on my parchment lined sheet pan, flip everything on the cut side down, and then we'll put those in the oven when we take out the Wellington. So we've got this uh, Wellington out of the oven now, that puff pastry with that egg wash is gorgeous. Beautiful brown parts on there are Brussels sprouts, nicely roasted and brown. So let's cut into this and get it plated. This again is that South Texas antelope. And so what we're gonna do now is just kind of give a slice and then plate that up and dig in. Beautiful. All right, and I just want to tie it with a little bit of fresh parsley for some little color. So there you go. Broken Arrow Ranch South Texas Antelope from the aged antelope, 28 day aged antelope leg into a beautiful filet that we wrapped with some pate, mushroom duxelle, and wrapped it in a little puff pastry, serving it with some Brussels sprouts. So Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen. Catch me next time while I bring the forest to your table.
This episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen was sponsored by Broken Arrow Ranch. Go to BrokenArrowRanch.com.